Hello, my name is Ray. I'm going to show how to provision a media player for publishing over the local area network, but I will use the new bsn.cloud service to provision that media player. I'm going to use the Control Cloud service, which is available at no cost. The Control Cloud service can provision and monitor devices anywhere in the world. The only difference between a Control Cloud and a Content Cloud account is the ability to push content via the cloud. We won't do that in my example. We'll push content directly over the local area network. But I'm going to use the Control Cloud account to provision my player and to monitor its status. I have here also uh, a media player which is brand new out of the box. It's never been set up. And so this is the screen a media player shows you when no memory card is inserted, uh, just as it's connected for the very first time. You see it's asking you to please insert a storage device. And then down below there are four lines of information that can be helpful. Mine is an XT1144, that's the model. It is connected to my local area network and has an IP address, in this case 192.168.1.103. That of course will be different in your situation. The third line is the serial number of the media player. We will need this to provision our player. And the last line shows the current operating system version on the media player, in this case 8255, which at the time of this recording is the most recent. Now returning to Bright Author Connected, I have logged in to a Control Cloud account. You know that this is a Control Cloud account because when you visit the admin page, there will be an offer here from BrightSign to start your Content Cloud 30-day trial. I'm not going to do that. I will leave this as a Control Cloud account. But this is a brand new account. There are no devices in it. And as we look at the administrative tab again, we'll see that there are no records in the device setup library and there are no records in the device provisioning library. It's truly a new account. Now my approach to getting started here is to go direct to device provisioning and add the device that I wish to provision. The serial number of the device is required. And if you remember, mine uh, is displayed there on the screen. <clears throat> Excuse me, D7E86X000561. That's the serial number of the media player I have. This is my XT1144. You can name the player anything you wish. And it's here in my Cupertino office. And add the device. Now, when I add this device, Bright Author will also create a default provisioning record. So both record types were created when I added this device. And notice that the, the provisioning record to be used I'm sorry, that the setup record to be used is this new default setup record. So returning, a device provisioning record now exists for this device. As well, in the device setup library, a default device provisioning record has been created. This can be used with as many media players as you wish. This is essentially the template of setup information that will be applied to any media player that joins this network. I can edit it, which I'm going to do simply to make one change here. I don't like a blank or a black idle screen color. I like to choose a color other than black. Um, I generally go with something purple. Um, that way, if my screen is idle, at least it displays a color and I know that the media player is OK. And local file networking is how we want players that use this, this uh, provisioning template to set themselves up. So we will update this setup file in the library. That's done. And returning to the admin page, we see that the device provisioning record is here and ready to go. So now keep an eye on my media player as I push a memory card, a blank memory card into this media player. The boot screen goes blank. And while the media player boots, you'll see that it will phone home and ask the bsn.cloud provisioning servers if a device record exists for this media player. And we see that it does because it proceeded straight to setting up the player. 
Uh, it will then reboot a number of times. So you simply need to leave it alone at this point. But you'll see also the IP address of the player is displayed, the serial number is displayed, and the operating system version are displayed as well. So we simply want to wait for this to run its course. Don't touch the media player, just leave it alone. I'll return to Bright Author. So we'll keep an eye on that in the small window. And as Bright Author, um, as the media player joins the service, eventually we'll see a device appear here. It hasn't appeared yet, but as you can see, the media player is still going through a reboot. So we'll simply wait for that to take its, take its course. The message on screen there indicated that it was unzipping some setup files. Patience is a virtue at this point. Uh, the media player simply needs to be left alone. But we will periodically refresh the screen and you'll see that my account now is aware of this device. And you see that setup is underway on the media player. So again, simply leave it alone. The media player will find its way home. OK, this is the message we get. I'll stop the screen share so you can see this a little larger. Congratulations, your BrightSign player is set up. Use BrightAuthor Connected to publish content via local file networking. So what has happened? The media player has joined my network. The network that I have joined it to is a control cloud account, meaning I cannot manage content via the cloud, but I can manage content over the local area network. And refreshing this, you see the media player is now in a green or all is well state. But you can see no content is running. So let's quickly get a presentation published to this media player. I'll just build something new. I'll just call this uh, my new setup. And I will accept all these defaults and go to the content page, browse to a folder where I have some images. I've got a nice slide here of the Golden Gate Bridge here in San Francisco that I'll just throw up here as a placeholder. There's my presentation with an image of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's not my objective in this video to uh, go through all the pros and cons and hows and how nots to create a, a presentation. I'm simply going to build this one that I've called New Setup save it and move to the schedule page where my 1144 now appears here under my local area network. If this doesn't appear, if this isn't available to you, you can add it by using the IP address 192.168.1.103 in my case and it will appear. And you can see that if you look at the media player screen again, you see it there uh, about in the middle of the screen, IP address 192.168.1.103. As long as you're on the same LAN, that will come through and be available to you. So let's take this new setup presentation I just built, set it to run all day, every day, select my media player and publish. Now keep an eye on the media player. The media player will reboot once simply one time the first publish after setting up a new media player almost always results in a player reboot but from there forward as you up update content or swap out presentations the player generally does not reboot only this first time so we simply need to wait and also notice here that the connection is not up because the media player is offline while it reboots if we look at our dashboard. We're still aware of the media player. We haven't given up on it. We know it's out there. We're simply waiting for the media player to, to run the presentation we published. Should do so here pretty quickly. There it is. You'll see that that image of the Golden Gate Bridge is now playing. I'll stop the, my screen share so you can see that full screen. And since that's the only image we published in this presentation, that's all that the media player will do until I send some new content. Now there's some other capabilities here. Uh, again, I have to, if I want to schedule or update content, I have to do that over the LAN. I can't do so via the cloud, 
but via the cloud I do have access to some status information about this media player. Go to the network tab there's the media player and select the uh, tool here and we get a real-time uh, web socket connection from the cloud to the media player returning to us all sorts of information about the status of the player we can browse the contents of the memory card if you had a need to do that particularly interesting for me is the ability to request a screen capture from the media player and that request happens in real time so this image was captured off the media player the moment I hit new snapshot and a new one has been captured this diagnostic page is available from anywhere in the world you could be at home you could be on vacation in the Bahamas as well if I open a browser bear with me while I start a screen share here on my browser and we log in at bsn.cloud choose the network I have several but this is the network we brought that player into we see the same status that we had using bright author the application notice that in the in a browser I can't build presentations I have to use the local version of bright author to do that on a control cloud account the browser can be used to monitor the network but it cannot be used to manage content so I can go to my network tab here and see the same media player status I saw before request that WebSocket connection and including requesting a snapshot and I'm doing this from a browser not having installed bright author connected uh, on a machine if I happen to be away from my desk so there at a browser I have this capability and from bright author connected I can I stop this screen share and return to bright author connected I have the network monitor the network monitoring capabilities we discussed but I can also build and publish presentations if I want to update this presentation with a different graphic I can do so and go to uh, publish this I'll save it and go straight to publish that to the same media player keep an eye on the media player while I publish this and you'll see it doesn't take long for the new graphic to step into place and further you'll notice the media player did not reboot I'll do that one more time from the presentation I'll put in a different graphic go to publish that this media player and once the file transfers the media player immediately begins to run that presentation so I hope this helps you see how to provision a media player using the bsn.cloud service a control cloud account publishing will take place over the local area network